Good evening, everybody. Welcome to our first episode of Black Health Rising. My name is Meryl Fury. I am one of your co-hosts. I'm a registered nurse and a transformational health coach, and I'm president and CEO of a nonprofit in the Chicago area called Plant-Based Nutrition Movement. I'm also founder of Balance Forward Health and Wellness. I would like to introduce my co-host, Dr. Ajay Shah. He's a board certified uh, cardiologist and also board certified in lifestyle medicine. He's an expert on obesity. He's founder of Healthy Living with Dr. Ajay Shah and Facebook page and the YouTube channel. So I met Dr. Shah online. Uh, this is one of the beauties of COVID. I've met so many people online that I probably would have never had a chance to meet otherwise. And we started talking and realized we had a great synergy and a great commonality of purpose led us to create this program. So why did we want to start it? We decided that in looking at our practices, Dr. Shah's uh, working in cardiology in Michigan and me as a nurse here, I'm in Wisconsin, and as a health coach, we see that a lot of African-American women suffer from preventable, reversible, healable diseases. Uh, it's an overwhelming number of people of African-American women. Actually, the statistic is that about 55% of African-American women suffer from obesity alone. And with, along with obesity comes heart disease, diabetes, high blood pressure, all kinds, of, a whole world of illnesses. The whole, all the illnesses that we see prevalent in America can be kind of rooted in obesity. So that's where we started. We decided that our passion, we realized our commonality, we have a passion for trying to get people past these illnesses to be able to reverse them. So that's why we're working together. Um, we expect for a pretty long time. Um, obesity is one of the biggest problems that people face and African-American women in particular, as I said, face it uh, a, lot, a lot higher rate than other populations. So we're here for you. If you suffer from overweight, high blood pressure, diabetes, or heart disease, or if you tried to fix any of these problems yourself but were not successful, if you were just being diagnosed, or if you've been taking medication for years, this show is for you. We're going to be looking at myths and beliefs and facts and stories and figures we're gonna provide some tips and tricks. We're gonna give you some challenges. It'll be fun. We even have recipes that are proven to turn chronic illness into vibrant health. Really, you can turn your health around. You can. Let's look at one of the myths. Um, one of the myths is that African-American women are heavier because of our genetics and that somehow we were born to be overweight. Well, that's just not exactly true. Now, we're definitely more curvy, definitely. Black women tend to have hips and thighs, and that is genetically accurate, that's for sure. But when we sit for too much in a day, we don't get enough exercise, we eat a lot of fats and a lot of processed foods, that layers on pounds. So curvy, yes. That's a beautiful thing that cannot be denied. But that extra 50 pounds or more, well, that's not so beautiful, not so much, and it's definitely not healthy. It contributes to all kinds of problems like Dr. AJ Shaw will talk about here shortly. He'll go into more detail. So like I said, curvy is beautiful, but obesity is dangerous. Let's let Dr. Shaw talk a little bit more about that. Dr. Shaw? Yeah, thank you, Meryl. Again, I'm very, very excited to partner with Meryl. I know Meryl as a leader in the Chicago area. We're gonna make this program not just lead in Chicago area or in Michigan. We're gonna open up this program to the whole country because as I understand, reading over statistics, 55% of African-American women are obese. When I came to America in 1986, I came to Detroit. And I saw only about 15, 18% of obesity in African-American women. And that number almost has tripled over the last 30, 35 years. And that's partly because of 
processed food, partly because of food deserts, where a lot of the African-American neighborhoods don't have access to whole food, plant-based vegetables and fruits and intact grains. So I think partly, I think the problem has to be kind of addressed through ourselves, but partly it has to be addressed through society. So why are we talking about this thing? Obesity now has been proven to the major, major cause for many, many chronic disease. So what are those chronic disease? Number one, number one killer in America is heart disease. Obese people die of heart disease at very young age. That means they develop heart attack, they develop heart failure, they develop atrial fibrillation where there's irregular heartbeats, they develop strokes, and they develop many, many other complications which are we call cardiovascular disease. Obesity also can lead to neurologic disease. That means a lot of the brain disease, uh, including Alzheimer disease, including vascular dementia, where people start losing their memory, their mind, their uh, mental function at a premature age in their 50s and 60s. And as a cardiologist, as a lifestyle physician, I see these complications in my practice in African-American women at a much, much younger age. And that's to be ashamed, in my opinion, as a society. We cannot, have, we cannot uh, allow this thing to happen to our great African-American women who have many times same education, same insurance, same desire to be healthy. We cannot leave them behind. And that's the reason we started this program. What are some of the other complications? Obesity in African-American women can lead to fatty liver, it can lead to cirrhosis of the liver. And now we know the number one reason for liver transplant is fatty liver from obesity. Obesity can also lead to prediabetes and diabetes, type two diabetes. And we all know, particularly in African-American population, African-American women, what a diabetes can do. Diabetes can lead to kidney failure and dialysis, blindness, amputation, obviously heart disease and stroke, and many, many complications of diabetes. Uh, obesity in African-American women, people don't realize, can also lead to infertility. A lot of the young African-American women are not able to get pregnant because of the obesity. Uh, obesity in African-American women can lead to many, many joint issues, including a lot of osteoarthritis. And I've seen many young African-American women in their 40s, 50s, and 60s getting joint replacement, particularly knee replacement, because the knees wear out because of the obesity and carrying the heavy weight burden. So again, obesity has many, many complications. Obesity can lead to sleep apnea, which is a condition where people stop breathing at night. Obesity can lead to many of the lung disease. Obesity can lead to even gastroesophageal reflux disease where juice from the stomach goes back in the esophagus. So obesity has many, many complications. I just listed some of the ones, but the most common complications, which are, are obesity actually can lead to cancer also. We don't realize that people with obesity have almost 20 to 30% higher chance of breast cancer, endometrial cancer, even some of the other cancers. So definitely obesity can lead to many, many deadly disease. Our goal, my goal with Merrill's help is gonna to be to educate people, to hold people's hand, to show them how it can be done. We both, myself, lost 50, 55 pounds. Merrill has gone through same. We both know exactly firsthand, not just as medical professional, but as a normal human being, how hard it is to lose weight and how hard it is to maintain the weight loss. But if we work together, if we make this program interactive, that means you suggesting what we should improve in this program, you asking questions, you sending the comments, and then we will have those questions and comments answered in the next episode. So again, starting with the complications of obesity and starting with knowing that we will be working together, let's go to the next, uh, next part where I want Meryl to explain us that what are the what are the few important things when any person, particularly African-American woman, wants to start on a journey of a weight loss? Yeah, so that's a big question, even regardless of your skin color. What do you want out of it, right? What motivates a person to want to lose weight? For some of us, I mean, really, if you go down, down, down to the 
most basic level. Sometimes it's you want to see your kids be able to graduate from high school, right? You want to avoid the diagnosis of diabetes or you want to reverse that. Maybe you don't want to take all the medications. Maybe you're tired of the pain in your body and in your joints in particular. You know, there's a lot of reasons for wanting to lose weight. Maybe you, you would like to be able to walk past a mirror and feel good about what you see in the mirror. Maybe you would like to be able to buy clothes in a regular, you know, easy to find size. There's lots of reasons for one to lose weight. Oh, sorry, that's my clock in the background. Um, one of the things about losing weight though, and this has been proven, to rely on willpower is probably the surest way to fail. <clears throat> Nobody's been able to find a way to bottle willpower and sell it on the market. If they could, they'd be bazillionaires. We have to find a way to create our environment so that it supports what it is we're trying to accomplish. So for example, uh -oh, sorry about that. <laughs> One of the things that we can do is take the, the foods that you're most likely to overeat out of your house. Don't let them in. Now, I know this is not necessarily easy, especially if you live with other people who want to keep eating those foods that you don't want to eat. But that's one solution. Maybe put your food off the healthy food, the stuff that, that's going to enrich you and keep you healthy and vibrant and lively. Put that in a separate cabinet, right? Where you can um, keep your food separated and you know, just don't go over there in that other cabinet or that part of the refrigerator where all those trigger foods are that get you overeating. That's just one way to do it. There, there are several ways and we can talk more about that. In fact, we will be talking more about how to set up your environment. I'm going to tell you a funny story. I have a friend who um, calls herself, these are her own words, she calls herself a compulsive overeater. She eats for all kinds of reasons when she's happy, when she's sad, when she's bored, when she's excited, when it's a birthday party, when it's a funeral, she eats for all kinds of reasons. And one of the things she said that was most important was to have people around her that supported her journey, supported her not eating for all those reasons. And that's what we mean to set up here on these video chats and these calls is to set you up with an environment that's supportive and that gives you answers. And that you can even, you know, we'll find a way to make sure that you can ask us questions and we can respond just to keep you supported in your journey. Dr. Shah? You know, I think I completely agree with you, Meryl, that uh, creating an environment, I think cleaning out our pantry, our refrigerator, our kitchen becomes such an important thing. That way, when we come home from a work, or even if you are working at home and if you are tired and if you don't have that uh, decision uh, making capacity left because we have decision fatigue, if our environment is clean, we automatically will make a right choice. I also want to today talk about a concept which is the most important concept when one wants to lose weight. And that concept is caloric density. There are a lot of videos on YouTube on caloric density, including a video by Chef AJ, including a video by Jeff know it. So I highly recommend all of you to watch those two or three videos on calorie density. But let me summarize in the next two or three minutes. We all eat about three to five pounds of food per day. So we need to eat that much food to get satiety, to get satisfaction on a daily basis. We cannot go hungry more than a few hours, many times no more than one day. So we need to eat three to five pounds of food per day every day. That means type of food you eat becomes very important. If you eat food which has tons of calories per pound, then automatically you will eat more calories per day because you are gonna eat three to five pounds of food per day. To give you an example, if people eat oily food, oil has a 4,000 calorie per pound. So even if you have just one tablespoon of oil, it's gonna give you 120 uh, calories per one tablespoon. If you eat a lot of the animal products, those have two to 3,000 calories per pound. So if you eat three to four pounds of food per day, you'll be eating four to 6,000 calories. If you eat, uh, for example, even a healthy bread, that has about 1,200 calories per pound. And if you eat three to four pounds of bread, you'll be eating about four to 5,000 calories per pound. 
So what are the some of the food which has a low caloric density and they happen to be actually some of the most micronutrient dense food. That means they have tons of good nutrients, healthy micronutrients and phytochemicals in those food. And those food include green vegetables. For example, green vegetables have only about 100 calories per pound. Fruits, fruits has only about 300 calories per pound. Then beans, legumes, and lentils has only about five to 600 calories per pound. Intact grains like uh, brown rice or black rice or millet or oat groats or oats, steel cut oats, those have about five to 600 calories per pound. Uh, starchy vegetables like potatoes and sweet potatoes has about 500 calories per pound. So again, when you eat the food with a lower calorie density, you can still eat three to five pounds of food, get a satiety, never go hungry, but still don't have those tons of calories per day. So again, I explain you this calorie density concept in a brief way, but I want all of you Everyone listening to this talk today to read and watch videos on calorie density and start eating based on calorie density. I also have recorded a four minute long video on my YouTube channel, Healthy Living with Dr. Ajay Shah on calorie density. You can watch that video, it's only four minutes long, but I think I sincerely think it's worth for you to invest 30 minutes to 60 minutes watching Chef Ajay's video and Jeff Novick video. So again, with that uh, background, I'm going to ask uh, Meryl to set a stage for all of us, particularly African-American women who many times lead the kitchen and lead the shopping and lead the household thing, lead the finances in the house, and they are actually the leader of the family. And Meryl is going to show us how a African-American woman, either a single woman or as a family leader, can start on a journey of whole food, plant-based, no oil diet. So go ahead, Meryl, please. All right, now this is from my own experience, okay? So I have a husband, I have two children that I, um, my biological children, I have a young lady that I adopted just because I love her. Um, it is, it can be, I'll say, a challenge to get the whole family on board. And that is one of the challenges a woman faces when you have other people in the house that you're responsible for. But one of the things we have to remember is that our health is important. And you know the saying, if mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. We have to take care of ourselves, right? Okay, so one of the things, there's so many ways you can go about it. Some people decide in a moment's notice, they're gonna change everything. They're gonna take all of the animal products, the cheese, the milk, the butter, the ice cream, the yogurt, all of it, all of the, the fish and everything, beef, chicken, all of it out of their house and they're never gonna bring it again. That is probably the most um, uncommon way to change. More often, I believe, people do it gradually. So to set the stage for a whole food plant-based, no oil way of eating, Start small. Start with just stop eating butter and milk. Replace those two. Replace them, right? So the cow's milk, honestly, they say about 80 to 90% of African Americans are allergic to cow's milk products. Allergic. We get acne, we get respiratory problems, we get digestive problems, lactose intolerance, all that. Um, is typical for African Americans because we really are not designed, nobody in the world actually, or very, very few people are, um, are physically able to digest cow's milk in general. So if you can take out the cow's milk, let's say you replace that with almond milk or soy milk or rice milk or hemp milk or oat milk, you choose any plant-based milk, I would recommend a unsweetened milk right, and get one that has as few ingredients as possible. That's one way to start. Another thing you can do is instead of having, um, let's say you like candies, you like sweet stuff, maybe you like cookies, you like pastries and desserts. Instead of buying those, buy fruit, buy apples, oranges, berries, um, 
Try new foods that you never tried before. Try star fruit, try lychees, try, try different fruits and use those instead of candies to satisfy your sweet tooth. Um, like Dr. Shah was saying, the calorie density is really important. You can honestly eat as much raw spinach all day long as you want. You probably burn more calories just chewing it than you get out of it in energy, right? So do things like that for your rice. Try brown rice, a whole grain rice instead of white rice. White rice is about the least nutrient rich food on the planet, I think. <laughs> it's got nothing but carbohydrate. Um, so try a brown rice. Try a different kind of grain. Try millet. Try farro. Try spelt. Um, quinoa. There's so many grains available now that you don't have to stick with white rice and white flour anymore, which are just stripped of all their nutrients. There's so many foods. The world of fruits and vegetables and nuts and seeds and legumes and whole grains is a huge world, huge. You can go to almost any country on the continent. Look them up on Google, right? Just Google mm, vegetable food from Mexico <laughs> or Indian food with no meat or something like that and you'll be amazed at the number of recipes you can find very flavorful, rich, beautiful, gorgeous. I mean, eating these foods is like, for me, it's like walking through a garden and eating just, just food that smells and tastes so rich and so full. Um, another thing I would recommend is drink water. Drink water. So many people do not drink enough water and you'd be surprised at how much water the human body actually uses in a day. The current recommendation is take your weight in pounds. Let's say you're a 100-pound person or maybe 200 pounds. Let's go with 200 pounds. You're a 200-pound person. You should drink 100 ounces of water a day. So it's your weight in pounds divided in half. That's the number of ounces of water to drink a day. 100 ounces, that's almost a gallon. Think about that. That's how much water we should be drinking in a day. Now, let's, let's say you're only 150 pounds, 75 ounces of water a day. You're only 100 pounds, 50 ounces of water a day. This is just to keep your body hydrated, to keep your organs plump and functioning, to keep your body evacuating toxins and moving the waste through. It helps with your um, skin tone. It helps, just it keeps your skin from feeling, being dried out, keeps flushes toxins from your skin, decreases acne, can even help you decrease headaches just by drinking water. So I would recommend that as one major thing. Water is a nutrient that you can't get enough of unless you drink it. You just can't. It's essential that way. So that would be my other recommendation. As we go through these talks and come live on um, Facebook and we have these chances to interact with you, please, if you have questions, if we have a chat somewhere that you can put questions in, by all means do. We'll do our best to answer them right in the moment. Um, but these are the things that we're gonna be focusing on. Your, the types of foods that are healthiest, the where to get the richest, ingredients, the, the best, highest number of nutrients, water, a little bit about exercise, a little bit about mindset, a little bit about the myths and the stories we've been told over years and years and years. Yeah, you can start today though with just drink more water and take the milk out of your refrigerator. Those would be two great places to start. Dr. Shah? Yeah, I think uh, you covered beautifully. Actually, I agree with you. And I think uh, going on a whole food, plant-based, no oil journey probably will be successful if we make gradual changes. That means you actually not necessarily uh, delete anything. You just add the things. So for example, if you are 
used to eating chicken in your dish, replace it with a tofu or a mushroom. If you are uh, used to eating a cow's milk, replace it with a soy milk. So you can always replace what you are used to. You don't have to go and look up for new recipes. Keep the same recipe, just look for the new healthy ingredient. So I think once you start into habit of it, maybe make a meatless Monday, maybe make a breakfast whole food plant-based no oil, and then make it a lunch, and then make it a dinner. So like Meryl said, most people, including myself, and I think Meryl too, we are used to with making gradual changes. Some people can do overnight, but those are rare people. Most of us are used to making gradual change, make one habit solid, then add a second habit, then third, add a third habit. So again, I think we're gonna teach you every Sunday at eight o'clock. We're gonna bring new topics. We're gonna reinforce, reinforce some of the common things which we all should know if you want to lose weight. So we will always reinforce every time what you should do for sure. And then we will also add new things every episode. I've been also doing uh, episodes on my Facebook page. Meryl has been doing on her YouTube channel on her Facebook page. So you can reach out for our separate Facebook page too because we will be presenting uh, weight loss and other disease issues in more often, more frequently. We will be coming live every Sunday on this forum on Black Health Rising, but you can reach Meryl and you can reach me and our page and our YouTube channel more often to have access to more information. We also want, we both of us, Marilyn and myself, want you also to be your own judge. Look up in the, in the Google search, watch more YouTube videos, read books, ask your own doctors, and be your own judge and your own deciding person what is good for you. We will only bring the facts to you, but you are the one who is gonna decide how much of the thing we bring, you're gonna accept and take it. We will be always science-based. We will not tell you any gimmicks. We will not bring any fat diet. We will not bring any crash diet. We will only bring what is healthy. We'll only bring which is evidence-based and based on science, and we both have tried ourselves. So having, having said that, we welcome all of you. Thanks for watching. Please share on your page. Please, uh, please make this interactive. Please get excited as much as both Meryl and myself are excited about this new program. African-American women and obesity is a major, major, major epidemic in America. It's bigger than COVID-19. And we are not putting our efforts, our resources, our knowledge, our passion into that cause. Meryl and I, myself, are gonna try our best to make a small dent, even if we help one African-American woman to be healthy and to be lean and reverse many of the chronic disease, our mission will be successful. I'm sure with Meryl's help and her expertise, we will make difference in millions of African-American women lives, but I'm gonna start with one today. So if you are that woman today, if you are that one woman today, please go ahead and comment, ask questions, share on your page, watch it on YouTube. This program will be on YouTube in a few hours, so you can watch it again and again. It will be on Meryl's uh, uh, YouTube channel. It will be on my YouTube channel. So please, again, be as involved as you can and lead us also. When you ask us questions, we also look up if we don't know the answers. When you ask us questions, we know that you are paying attention. So please be as interactive as possible. So having said that, I will ask Meryl to conclude our today's segment, and then we will go ahead and bring the next program next Sunday at 8 p.m. Uh, go ahead, Meryl, please. Well, I just wanna thank everybody who was able to show up, and for anyone who watches this on replay, we are here for you. This is a great, deep passion for both Dr. Shah and myself. Um, I, I can't tell you how important it is to me. I, there's no words for that. I have people in my family who are challenged with some of these same issues. I love them dearly and I feel the same way about anybody who's watching. We wanna make a difference for people who suffer from these illnesses. And let me tell you, you can reverse this stuff. You have a say in how this goes. You don't have to be sick. You don't have to be in pain. You have something you can do. 
And it's really, really, I'm not kidding. It has everything to do with what's on the end of your fork every meal. It's really simple. Now, I'm not saying it's easy, but it's very simple. That's what we're here for, to empower you in your journey to take back your health. Take it back. I, uh, let me tell you, I could get up on a soapbox and talk for another hour, but I won't. <laughs> we'll take our time over the next weeks to bring this home, bring this message home, and make a difference for, for people that we care about, which is everybody. So thanks so much for watching. We'll definitely see you next week. You guys take care. Have a great week. Get that cow's milk out of your refrigerator, and we'll catch you next time.